the cancer came back. It's two small tumors. This in the lungs. Many Motown stars have tragedy winding throughout their lives on and off stage. Mary Wells, the woman who kicked off Motown's all-encompassing success as the go-to label for soul and R&B was no exception. Born in Detroit in May 13, 1943, Wells had a difficult childhood, an absent father and a mother who worked as a domestic to support herself and her three children. At the age of three, Wells was temporarily paralyzed by spinal meningitis and had to learn to walk again. She began singing in church as a little girl and singing in contests and clubs at the age of 10. When Wells was 16, she met an assistant to Berry Gordy Jr. of Motown Records, who brought her in to present a song she'd written for Jackie Wilson. Motown signed her, and she recorded the song, Bye Bye Baby, herself. She paired up with Smokey Robinson, and the result was a string of hits, the biggest coming in 1964, My Guy, went to number one on the pop charts. While her career took off, Wells dealt with significant personal challenges. To begin with, in 1960, at age 17, Wells married her first husband, backup singer Herman Griffin. She divorced him two years later after he made her undergo two abortions because of her career and also because he cheated on her with a prostitute. In 1964, encouraged by her ex-husband, Wells sued Motown. To her, she felt that she had made a lot of money for the company and had nothing to show for it. This ended in her being out of contract with Motown, after which struggling to be in the heights of success she was in before. Wells married singer Cecil Womack in 1966, and together they had three children, Cecil Jr., Stacy, and Harry. She had an affair with Cecil's brother, Curtis, as detailed in the book Mary Wells, The Tumultuous Life of Motown's First Superstar. Wells felt so much guilt around the affair that she attempted suicide in 1977, later explaining, Cecil was suffering, Curtis was suffering, I was suffering, I just couldn't take it. In 1977, she divorced Cecil and moved in with Curtis, they had a child together, Sugar. She would start using drugs heavily in 1978 for relief, like so many other people do, but never talk about it. The thought of the failed relationships, the wasted opportunities, the betrayals were too much for her to handle. She used heroin, cocaine, and methadone and was a heavy smoker during that period, only stopping when she was pregnant with her daughter Sugar. Even after completing a drug rehab in 1990 after deciding to turn her life around, the damage had already been done. She learned she had cancer of the larynx, which later spread to the lungs. On top of this, her main asset, her voice, was no more. She was just whispering the lyrics. This tore her down. And on July 26, 1992, at the age of 49, the pain ended. She died from the effects of her unsuccessful treatments and a weakened immune system, which had brought about pneumonia. What do you remember her for? Do tell us in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe.